What's up, family? All right, so we have NFL quarterback Jacoby Brissett, who plays for the New England Patriots, who's making headlines everywhere, y'all, because he wrote this letter to Barack Obama thanking him for becoming the first black president and inspiring him to follow his own dreams. Now, the letter in and of itself is harmless, right? Only one little problem. When he wrote the letter, he wrote it in anticipation to going to the White House to meet Donald Trump. So people up in arms, they pissed. You taking shine off of Trump. Trump is the president now. You shouldn't be injecting Barack Obama into the discussion, even though Barack Obama was classy and he was a decent human being and Donald Trump is a despicable human waste. Hey, should have said that. Anyway, y'all, it goes like this. With all of the negative energy constantly spewing out of the White House these days, it's nice to get some positive energy in the mix. Last week, the Super Bowl champion Patriots visited the White House to celebrate. After returning from the celebration, one Patriot player couldn't help but think about President Obama. The player, Jacoby Brissett, expressed his gratitude for Obama in a heartfelt message he posted to Instagram. Brissett included a photo of himself standing next to a picture of Obama signing the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, which he signed only his second week in office, more than Trump did in 100 days in office. And if you gave him 100 years, it'd still be more than what he did. Anyway, the message goes like this. Dear Big O, I am writing you this letter to say thank you. I want to thank you for what you've done for this country outside of politics. Honestly, I don't know enough about politics to judge what was good or bad, but I want you to know that when you said, yes, we can, a young man dreaming a dream from a rough circumstances in Florida heard you. When you were elected president for the first time, I was 16, and I watched you make the never imaginable attainable, and I heard your cry to inspire hope. I used these words as motivation and saw your achievement as an opportunity and permission to work to make my dreams come true too. You were the president of the United States, the highest office in the world. You broke a barrier and stereotype proving not every minority has to use a ball to make a way. You've inspired a lifetime of dreamers, young and old. Now, kids from my community and my future children will know there is no dream to be. Even they could be the president of the United States. As I prepare for the honor of visiting the White House, I will be there as a Super Bowl champion and I will think of you, mainly because the White House is a different and better place because you live there. I was a kid that came from nothing and I am living one of the greatest dreams of my life. I am just grateful for the opportunity to walk on the same steps as you did and to have a platform to inspire, and I hope to leave my mark on history the way you did. One day, when I meet you, I will shake your hand and say thank you to your face, but until then, this kid is going to continue to dream big until I can't anymore. Thank you for blazing a trail, but for more than that, for leaving a paved road behind you for others to climb on. The biggest adventure you can take is to leave the life of your dreams. It's quoting Oprah Winfrey, to live the life of your dreams. Yes, we can. Dream big. Thank you, Jacoby Brissett. P.S. Holler at me if you need help with that broke jump shot. Okay. Y'all mad? <laughs> I'm going to tell you like this. The only thing, the only problem I have with the letter is that when he said that Obama inspired him, you know, he inspired other, others and he broke the stereotype that not all minorities has to use a ball to make it. Uh, you know, well before Barack Obama ever was a pure thought, there was many, 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 many people who broke that barrier and showed and proved that 
black people and other people of color didn't have to use a ball to uh, make it. I kind of get where he was trying to go with that. I think that he was trying to salute him for becoming the first black president more than anything and just trying to honor that. And that with that being the highest office in the land, I get that part. But to me, I say never forget the ones who came before you. If, if not for all of those great uh, champions of education and invention and uh, business, science, medicine, who came before Barack. Barack doesn't have a platform to stand on. You know, he doesn't have a solid foundation. So we must always remember, make, make, make sure you always remember those who came before. Think about the most exciting person that you love right now, that you admire right now, the person that you admire more than anything right now. Think about that person, who that person is. And I know it seems like that person stands alone and nobody can touch that person. But that person was inspired by somebody else. Somebody opened doors. Somebody took the hit for that person to be able to stand on the solid foundation that they're standing on right now. So never forget those who came before your idols, the people that you admire. Never forget that. And if you're one of those persons that's doing great things, always, always pay homage. Always pay homage. You know, humility is good. Now, the problem, another problem, I'm going to tell you, the problem that I have as far as with Jacoby's actions, I wish you wouldn't have gone at all. I mean, to me, like, man, be like the other players who didn't go at all. Like, stick it to them all the way. But then again, I like the covert. The covert thing is kind of cool, too. You know how he kind of, like, slipped in there, like, yeah, I'm going to go check it out. But then I'm going to write this letter but to Barack. <laughs> so had he, had he not just gone and he just said it out, then maybe he wouldn't have had gotten this much attention uh, from his letter. So maybe that was a good thing. Maybe that was a good move that he actually went and he stuck it to Trump. I don't care. You know what? I don't care. I'll take it back. I don't care how you get Trump. I don't care how you stick it to him. I just need you to stick it to him. It don't matter how you stick it to him. Just stick it to him. Show as much disrespect for him as possible because he has no respect for anything himself. But it's amazing how people want everybody to respect him and it's amazing how they try to stand up for him and say respect the office and all of this kind of stuff i like the idea in fact you should have went facebook live on that clown she went live and then and, and did did a whole live yo yo i want to thank barack like right down doing the team pictures like yeah i want to thank barack that's how you should have done it but here's the thing man People will inevitably have a problem with what dudes said. You know, they want to take it out of context. I think dude was just following his emotions. He wasn't trying to be politically correct. He was just saying what was on his heart. And what was on his heart, you know, was to salute Barack Obama. He was like standing there like going like, man, this is the White House. This is a place that was off limits for black people for, for centuries, unless they were servants. And we actually had a black president to walk these steps. And I know some of y'all don't understand, like don't feel like that don't mean nothing. Well, what did he do? He didn't do nothing. And black folks this and that's and, and, and yeah, you you know, you you know, you got a good argument. I ain't gonna lie. You got a good argument, but it did inspire a lot of black kids and other kids to think to themselves, you know, if he can get in, I can get in. And maybe, you know, Barack had to take the hit. You know, I, you didn't think it was going to be a walk in the park for the first black president, did you? you know, maybe he had to take the hit so that the next black president can, you know, get things done 
and be more efficient, be more proficient. And and even just do what the fuck he want to do, just like Donald Trump is doing. Go in there and do what the fuck you want to do. Like, and irregardless of what the opposition says, because they're going to talk anyway. That's what I was saying about Barack. He should have just, once he realized that the Republicans wasn't going to work with him, like if it would have been me, I'm talking about, I ain't talking about no midterms and second term. Man, if I would, once I realized a motherfucker didn't want to work with me the first day, fuck them. I'm doing it like I want to do it. I would have been like, fuck all of them at the gate. Soon as I realized they said we're going to block everything you do, as soon as I saw that, I would have been like, okay, okay. And I would have went in. That's how I would have done it. This is a situation where you got a young black man who came from nothing, followed his dreams, was inspired by the first black president of the United States, and he wrote a letter to him thanking him. Out of 45 presidents, we got one, and he acknowledged that. And so what's the problem with that? So if you have a problem with that, you know, you should be asking yourself, not why did he write the letter, but why do you have a problem with him writing the letter? That's what you should be asking yourself. Now, look here, man, if y'all like these videos that I put out and y'all want me to continue to put these videos out like this, make sure you follow the movement. Patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Willie D Live. Go there and join the movement. The link is in the description. No more talk. What, what the ladies talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.